Let's get into dumb bleep number one. Let me tell you all about this conversation I had. No, no, this is me because this is a uh, a lot of these comments on Twitter. I mean, you're welcome. Am I the dumb bleep? Yes, number one. Dumb bleep zero. The origin dumb bleep is you, and now we're going to go to number one. I'm the OG. Yeah. So the first one. So Senator Rand Paul and Doctor Anthony Fauci had another spar. They 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 got While into Fauci it. Was sick. While he was sick, he was on video. All right. Oh, okay. So uh, we we got to see him finally with no mask on because he wasn't in the room, and they got they got into it yesterday. Now I'm going to play the conversation. And it's not exactly the conversation that's the dumb bleep. It's a comment that I commented on the now this politics or whatever it is, now this. I commented. The comment did really well, got a bunch of retweets. And the responses, oh, my God. They were beautiful. Holy crap. We're going to be going through some of the responses for, for dumb bleep number one. So dumb bleep will be Rand Paul v. Fauci. And let's just hear what they were actually talking okay. about, though. Just for the people voting, there's a few things that go into this, right? What's that? In the Rand Paul v. Fauci. Oh, yeah. yeah. So all of this involves the Rand Paul Fauci conversation I just know we've had Twitter. some ballot stuffing and mm. other things going on in, yes, lately yes. in the group. But I just want to set the ground rules. I want to be restrictive. <laughs> Supp- <laughs> suppressive. Suppressive. And all of that yep. when it comes to this voting. All right, here, if you want to vote, you have to go to joingmail.com. Um, let's see. Let me make sure that my sound is set up before I even hit play on this thing. For it is. For our see? Spanish friends, this is uh, numero uno. All the distribution <laughs> of money in research grants. Um, well, first of all, let's talk about royalties. That's the question. No, that's the question. Have oh, you ever no, overseen, have you ever received a royalty plan. payment from a company that you later oversaw money going to that company? You know, I don't know as a fact, but I doubt it. I well, would be well here's the go- thing is, why don't you let us know? Why don't you reveal you- how much you've gotten and from what entities? The NIH oh, refuses. Set it, set it Look, up. we ask them. We ask them. The NIH, we ask them whether or not who got it and how much. They refuse right. to tell us. They sent it redacted. Here's what I want to know. It's not just about you. Everybody on the vaccine committee, have any of them ever received money from the people who make vaccines? Uh, Can you tell me uh, that? Can you tell me if anybody on the vaccine approval committees ever uh, received gonna, any money from people who make the vaccine? Soundbite number one, are you going to let me answer a question? Okay, so let me give you some information. First of all, according to the regulations, people who receive royalties are not required to divulge them even on their financial statement, according to the Buy Dole Act. So let me give you some example. From 2015 to 2020, I the only royalties I have was my lab and I made a monoclonal antibody for use in vitro reagent that had nothing to do with patients. And during that period of time, my royalties range from $21 a year to $7,700 a year, and the average per year was $191.46. It's all yeah, reda- it's all it. redacted, and you can- okay. So that's where we're that's that's what we're going to start off with talking about. It's weird how he mentioned the dates was 2015 to 2020. Yeah, on this one random thing on that was used in vitro, not on any patients. Run royalty. And the regulation stipulates that they don't have to tell you what their royalties are. Now, this is kind of weird, you know, when, when uh, any kind of people in Congress, when they decide to, I don't know, buy a stock or something, I think if, if it's over 15000 or is, is it under? They still have to divulge whether or not they purchased stock in that company. And I think that's for a good reason, because they then control those companies and can uh, basically determine whether or not the stock goes up or down when they get those positions. And so what about when you're receiving royalties from a vaccine and then the government proceeds to mandate that people take the vaccine? While using based on your recommendation, yeah, based on your recommendations as the person who's running our COVID response, th- that seems like a reasonable uh, question to try and get answered. To me, I don't know. What well, another thing that was funny uh, was now this their post on them. This was like the first post I saw. Their post was Senator Rand Paul. Everybody on the vaccine committee, 
Have any of them ever received money from the people who make vaccines? Dr. Anthony Fauci, are you going to let me answer a question? Soundbite number one, are you going to let me answer a question? <laughs> Those were the quotes they put on there. What a response. This, there's the response. Okay, so now let's get into some of the ridiculousness that happened. Now, I know these are a bunch of randos, but, you know, we had to deal with them. And so this person on here, Fox News, LOL, uh, oh, please ask him if he's ever received money from the gun, oil and gas, or pharmaceutical lobbies. And so I responded with, the government didn't force anyone to buy guns. If they receive vaccine kickbacks while mandating that people buy it, you don't see a problem. Sounds reasonable to me. Uh, you ask about the gun lobbies. Well, they didn't pass a law or the administration didn't get a recommendation from Dr. Gun Fauci, who said everyone has to buy a gun after receiving money from the gun lobbies or anything like that. Uh, seems reasonable to ask. And so anyway, I got a bunch of responses on here. We got a bunch of responses saying they don't mandate that people buy it. They were given out for free. For free, folks. They were free. How about that? Mm -hmm. uh, so let's go on to another one. Again, nobody had to pay for them. They were free. Here's another one. Quote, mandating that people buy it. What are you talking about? You don't buy a vaccine. You don't, you don't buy vaccines. <laughs> you don't buy that. What are you talking about? What kind, of, what kind of losers out here purchased their vaccines? They're totally free. You know Pfizer and Moderna. They did this out of the goodness of their hearts. They didn't receive any money for the COVID vaccines. The manufacturing lines. Every, everybody working in the production of the these needles, things. The needles, the healthcare workers that injected and gave you the jab. It was all done for free. And another person. Who was mandated to buy it? Mine was free. <laughs> okay, so y'all get the point here. Not only that, but if you have health insurance, your health insurance was charged. Yeah. For this, by the way. If you didn't have health insurance, then the government picked up the bill. But, like, it was still paid for. And this is one of the things that I think we really have to work on getting across to everyone. And I think it's why people like Milton Friedman spent so much time on it. But this this idea that you can get a – that there's a free lunch, that you're going to get something and you're not going to have to pay for it. That somehow the things that the government provides had no cost – to you, even if they didn't charge you at the point that you received it, uh, that there was somehow had no cost to you. Of course, the major point is all these people think that the vaccine was free, but it was not, in fact, free. We use tax money to buy the vaccines from the vaccine companies, and then we mandated that people took the vaccines. Now, they tried to mandate that way more people took the vaccines, and that was held up. Uh, but, yeah, they weren't free. And by the way, speaking of them being mandated uh, to do this. Oh, here's one more. Sorry. I didn't pay a dime to get vaccinated. No. Now, if, if they don't pay any taxes. Not even just one dime. Maybe it's true if they don't pay any taxes. But even then it's not true. Because even if you're someone who gets away with not paying any taxes every year because you didn't make enough or whatever it is, you still probably bought goods and services throughout the entire year. And taxes on all of those people were worked into the price of all of the goods and services that you paid for for that year. So you still paid for it anytime you purchase something from another person, regardless. All right, let's get on to this last response here. It looks like from the numbers that I can find that so far the United States has spent roughly $30 billion on just purchasing vaccines, not including the $12.5 billion they spent in Operation Warp Speed for vaccine research. And it looks like around the world, a total somewhere around $179 billion. Yeah. So, so this free. Same thing as free, this, by the way. This person, last thing, how do you, so this is someone who uh, was arguing against all the crazies on there. They said, how do you like that Pfizer profited over $22 billion off of the COVID vaccine in just 2021? Do you like it even more that they made that much money and it was all funded by your tax dollars? So Fox News LOL says, but isn't this your beloved free market in action? Or should the government have forced them to make it for free? This is the same person who said that it was free earlier. Isn't that communism? 
And that person can vote. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That person votes in yeah. elections. Yeah. They help decide uh, what people help decide our economy. It's right there. Yep. So isn't why, oh Lord, why? Isn't this your beloved free market in action? Now, you know, you strip this all the way down to something like a Adam Smith, Wealth of Nations, or you go to, maybe you talk about Ayn Rand, or we even go to Thomas Sowell or Milton Friedman, and you could talk about Mises or anyone. You know what they talked about was uh, the free market is when uh, the government puts a gun to your head, and then they take your money through force under threat of imprisonment or death if you refuse the imprisonment, uh, and then they take your money and then they give it to a company to supply a good that the government is also forcing you to take at the same time. That's about as free as it gets. That's one of the uh, best examples of free market capitalism yeah. that I've ever heard. It's the underpinnings of the invisible hand. <laughs> <laughs> it's just because it's invisible doesn't mean it yeah. isn't there. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> you just can't see all this stuff. At work right That's there. That's Reaganomics for you. That's trickle down. <laughs> trickle down capitalism right there. <laughs> That's what that is. Okay, so that's all dumb bleep number one. Mm. All of that was dumb bleep number one, just to be clear. Next one, Charlie. All right, here we go. Dumb bleep number two. So number one was like Rand Paul versus Fauci. There are a little all, bit of notes on this, by the way. And all the dumb people who thought that the vaccine was free. Yeah. All right, number two. We got the, we got the monkeypox, folks. And uh, in case you were wondering, this is from Time. Uh, the World Health Organization, the WHO, will officially rename monkeypox in light of the concerns about stigma and racism surrounding the virus. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> the World Health Organization will rename the increasingly spreading monkeypox virus after a group of scientists claimed the name could be stigmatizing. Quote, who is also working with partners and experts from around the world on changing the name of monkeypox virus. Who Director General Tedros Adhamanan Ghebreyesus <laughs> announced at a press briefing Tuesday. Quote, we will make announcements about the new names as soon as possible. Yep. St stigmatizing, uh, stigma and racism around monkeypox now, what in the world could they be referring to, I wonder? I don't here. know. <laughs> I really don't know at all. I mean, what are they comparing this to? What? <laughs> like, like who, this? who are they responding to? You just got to imagine, like, the the people who will actually take that to its racist form, the very the small amount of people that will take that to its racist form. It seems like they're the ones who went there. These non-racist people, Seem, yeah, the people who are very much not racist mm -hmm. for sure. They're not racist and at all. They're the ones who are making the correlation. Yeah, and they're and in and in their non-racist head, they're like, well, we need to rename monkeypox because uh, monkey. First thing I think of is black people, <laughs> and so we need to change it because I'm not racist. You're not thinking that. That's them. <laughs> no, that's them saying that. Mm. Man, they're super not racist, yeah. and that's the thing that everyone needs to know. The other names, by the way, they're in the running right now. Uh, throwing out a few here. Uh, Fasha Pox, Trump Pox, uh, El Elon Pox, I think is pretty good. Florida Pox has a nice ring to it. Florida Pox, that's good. And Profit Pox, and of course, I think what they will settle on is Putin Pox mm -hmm. will be the main thing. They left out uh, runners, runner ups. They left out anal pox, butt pox, ass pox. Yeah, yeah. They left those out. I just got shot in the butt pox. <laughs> <laughs> or, of course, to be easy, monkey pox plus. <laughs> in other news, the country of Niger is changing its name because people in Alabama keep getting the pron pronunciation wrong. <laughs> so the who wants to change that too? Yeah, I think we should change it. Yeah. Okay, so that's dumb bleep number two. Monkeypox, name change. All right. Number three. 
Number three comes from the beautiful George Washington University. After a thoughtful and deliberate process that engaged the university community for feedback, the George Washington University's Board of Trustees has decided to discontinue the usage of the Colonials moniker. So they will no longer be, their mascot will no longer be the Colonials. Because those were racist. Because that's bad. They had monkey box. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I just, I, what I think is weird here is like uh, you you come to a place and you set up your own, uh, I don't know what to call it because I don't want to offend anyone, but like your own area. Commune. Okay. That's fine. <laughs> You're an area where like you live, like you set up this mm-hmm. camp. Homestead. Like a town. Homesteaders. Mm-hmm. Homesteaders. George yes. Washington Homesteaders. Better, there you go. Much better name. And, uh, of course, we look forward to Elon Musk starting the first woke inclusive term word on Mars here in a few years. I think that'll be, I think that'll be great. Mm. Whatever the word is that we come up with. Mm. I don't know. Okay. So, I, you know, maybe that's not... Maybe maybe it does offend people. Does it offend you? Are you? Are, well, no. You're a straight white male. Yeah. I, yeah, yeah. So that's not. I am the offender. Yeah. I you're the colonialist. So I can't be right now. Yeah. There's no way I could feel offended. Why not? Why not just remove George Washington from the title also? Yeah. I'm, apparently that guy had slaves. That he, there were colonies, there was there were colonials, and George Washington was one of the the people. Now, why get rid of that word and not just get rid of George Washington at the same time? I don't don't know why you wouldn't do that. Yeah, and look, I feel like it goes without saying, but I'll mention it anyway. (laughs) Like, what happened to the Native Americans um, in large part was very wrong because it's wrong to harm people. I don't agree with it. I don't agree with it. We don't believe in, in hurting people, and we don't believe in taking their stuff. That's the libertarian principles. But and changing the name from colonials as if as if we didn't come over here and establish colonies and establish colonies, they'll do everything short. And we weren't the only ones, by the way. You remember New York? You was called New Amsterdam. Yeah, uh, back in the 1600s, because it was the Netherlands that settled New York first. But we're the only country that had colonies. I bet, right? No. Oh, okay. The Netherlands hmm. had. Colonies. Okay. Here. England had colonies here. The Spanish. But it's only America that's the problem, though. Yeah, of course. Just making sure. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, and what I was going to say is they're going to do everything short when it comes to this. Everything short of just giving their land back to Native Americans or whoever had the land in the first place. Like the actual thing, you know, that would make it right, if you want to call it that. I mean, the people that are. Maybe the people that are here right now, they would have had access to that land or whatever. They'll never do that, but they will make all of these little virtue signals to try and make themselves look better in the process. Okay, let's go on to, that was Dumb Believe number three. Number four. <laughs> um, this is from Mayday Mindy. She tweets, oh, this one's great. This is so good. Hashtag Roe v. Wade, by the way. Uh, my heart goes out to all the unborn children that Brett Kavanaugh, Amy Coney Barrett, Neil Gorsuch, Samuel Alito, Clarice Thomas, and John Roberts are going to save just so they can be massacred in elementary school with AR-15s. It's better <laughs> that we kill them. All of them. Before they even have a chance yeah, because they have a very high chance of getting massacred to in die school. in the classroom. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So perfect logic. Her heart is really bleeding for these kids. It goes out to them. Very sad. Mm-hmm. Very very sad stuff that they will uh, live to certainly meet their untimely and tragic death at a school. Well, it's much um, more sad for everyone else. Yeah. Nate, when you die by an AR-15 in a school. That's yeah. That's way. That's way worse. Mm-hmm. That's a lot worse. If we get rid of them before they're even born, we won't have to deal with it. And doesn't that kind of, don't yeah. you kind of think that that's a little bit of the logic that yeah. you see from the left? 
I mean, deep down. Much it's just like, better that we weren't here. Much like if she jumped off a building and unalived herself, she probably wouldn't have to go through the pain of losing her dad. <laughs> yeah. Or anything like that. That's I mean, true. You can stop it right now. My heart goes out to her that she's still alive. <laughs> To feel the terrible feelings that come with life. And look, I'm not making fun of kids dying. Obviously, it's a, it's heartbreaking. But the chance of, of a kid dying in a school by an AR-15 is basically like getting struck by lightning. It's they're, about that. They're about the same. And what's the chance of a kid dying during an abortion? Usually 100%. It's a, almost 100. Yeah. Almost 100%. And you know what she's also saying? Their heart goes out to all these kids who are just going to get massacred. What she's way, also I think this decision comes out today. What she's also saying is um, her heart also goes out to all the kids that are currently alive. Mm -hmm. Those but poor kids. They didn't have the opportunity to be murdered. They should have just been killed. Because the now they're clearly just going to get killed by an AR-15 mm -hmm. in a school. Okay. That was dumb bleep number, what was that, number four? Yeah, number four. Okay, back to racism here for a minute. Let's go to this. Now, I just thought this was weird. Okay, we went through a really terrible history it, throughout the world and also in this country where where uh, black people were definitely held down, uh, discriminated against. And, uh, and this person, it looks like her uh, family, looks like her dad experienced that discrimination just write on a picture of a note that they found. Okay, this person says, I was seven years old. It's not ancient history. It's current reality. Now, this letter right here is from, uh, what school is this right here? Acknowledgement is made of Emory, your letter. Emory University. Emory University. It says it right there. At Georgia. The top. How about that? From Georgia. An acknowledgement is made of your letter on July 30 and closing your application for admission to our School of Medicine. I am sorry to write to you that we are not authorized to consider for admission a member of the Negro race. I regret that we cannot help you. Yours very truly. Now that's sad. And they, uh, on the bright side, at the very bottom, it says, P.S., I'm returning here with your $5 application fee. So that was nice. That was a nice gesture. I'm not sure I would call that bright side, <laughs> <laughs> Nate, but I would say that I was, yeah, they could have kept the $5 and they didn't. Okay, so here's the problem. That is something that happened. It is, in fact, something that happened. But is, it, is that our current reality? No. That we have right now? Because circled on there is August 5th, 1959 on the photo. And this person says, it's not ancient history. It's current reality. It was 61 years ago. What? Yeah. It's not It's not 1959. Wait, right now. 63 years ago. Not 1959 currently. Mm, okay. It's not. Now, that would, it is the truth that that does not qualify as ancient history. But what do you do, like, when you do change things? This is not the case anymore. Like, a black person doesn't apply to a college, and then they say, we can't admit people who are black. That's not the case in the United States of America. If there, if it is, send me the letter or the email and let me know. In fact, it's opposite. It is the opposite. Now, yes. by the way. Yeah. The current reality mm. is that it's easier to get into school uh, if you are anything but white. Yeah. As um, long as you're not white, it's a lot easier to get into, to get into school. Or Asian, I think. I'm always reminded of my wife's, uh, my wife's story when she was going to MTSU, Middle Tennessee State University, when she was going there, she applied for uh, financial aid, going to the school. Now, when we first moved down here, we were super poor. We we're rolling in it like we are right now. <laughs> super poor. <laughs> she was selling her blood plasma, something that you've done before, mm -hmm. to make money uh, to uh, and doing other stuff on the side that I don't even want to talk about. <laughs> And she applied for financial aid, and they said that they couldn't give her financial aid. And she was like, why? And he was like, well... I could just tell you that if you were if you were black or if you had kids, I would be able to give you financial aid. But I'm not I can't give you financial aid. That's what she was told mm. by the person in the office. I'm always reminded of that story when we talk about 
uh, the situation in college these days. There's no such thing <clears throat> as reverse racism, Nate. Yeah. So. Um, okay, so I'm just making some notes on this as we go along. That's dumb bleep number five. Uh, the next one comes from, I believe, Jamal Bowman uh, in, pertaining to Elon Musk voting for Myra Flores. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's, he tweets out here. Um, well, in response to, he quote tweets uh, Musk's tweet where he says that he voted for Myra Flores the, the first time I ever voted Republican. Massive red wave in 2022. So Jamal Bowman responds and says, Elon Musk is not a leader. He's just another Republican billionaire who supports white supremacy and authoritarianism because he doesn't want his workers to unionize or to pay his fair share in taxes. The GOP just tried to end democracy, and now he's supporting them. (laughs) Never mind the ethnicity (laughs) of Myra Flores. Oh, it's funny you mentioned that. Who's Hispanic. (laughs) Literally born in Mexico. She's not white. <laughs> yeah. Um, but he's just a white supremacist it, for voting for her. It's so ridiculous. Yeah. But she gives AOC a, a big run for her. <laughs> That's for sure. I think. She's the full package, think, Charlie's yeah. saying. Full package. She's number one now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is ridiculous. And, of course, the GOP tried to end democracy. There's no, mm. They tried. Luckily, yeah. we still have it right now. But it is imperative. So we got most of it in there. Racism, mm-hmm. uh, ending, ending democracy. He's not paying his fair share in taxes. Mm-hmm. Which. Rich billionaire. <laughs> he's paid the largest tax bill that anyone's ever paid in the history of humankind. Mm. Not enough. Yeah. Not enough in taxes. Mm-mm. At all. Oh, okay. All right, we're going to go on. So that was number six, Elon Musk, white supremacist, for voting for this uh, woman who was born in Mexico to be in Congress. Mm. Right there. Of course. Of course. Lines up perfectly. All right. Number seven. This is one I found to be really ridiculous, okay? Not that they not that they fired the guy or anything like that, but uh, so an officer who displayed Nazi insignia received a $1.5 million payout from the city of Kent, Washington, to resign. So they tried to get rid of him, and they ended up having to pay him $1.5 million for him to actually resign. Why is that, Charlie? Why did they have to pay him so much money? Because of the freedom of speech. Because of the police union. That's why. A suburban Seattle city will pay more than $1.5 million to settle a dispute with a former assistant police chief who was disciplined for posting a Nazi rank insignia on his office door and joking about the Holocaust. Uh, he joked, by the way, that his... Nazi. Uh, he joked that his grandfather died in the Holocaust when he got too drunk and fell out of the guard tower. Oh, God. Okay. So, extremely not funny joke at all. I don't find it. It's not funny. And and so listen, th- he was getting fired. You were gritting your teeth there. <laughs> <laughs> He's getting getting fired, and I'm fine with him being fired over this. Yeah, I'm whatever. You know, mm-hmm. I don't care if they don't like the way that he pressed his shirt, or they thought that he was overweight or whatever. Like I don't care why they fired him at all. What's ridiculous is how hard it is to fire a police officer or someone else who is the member of a union. This can come down to teachers and everything as well. They said that they, if they would have just fired him, then he would have won back his job through arbitration due to federal and state labor laws. And so they ended up just having to pay him $1.5 million to get rid of him. How crazy can your laws and your unions be that to get rid of someone off the force, even a Nazi, even a Nazi, that's out there. You had to pay that person $1.5 million. I recommend to all the people I know that are police, you put yourself a Nazi symbol up on your door right now, and I'll only take half, okay? <laughs> i only take half of the payout, but for this idea, I recommend you put a Nazi logo up on your door mm-hmm. at the moment we'll to sp- get that payout. We'll split the proceeds. I mean, <laughs> we'll split the proceeds. Unions, uh, I'm not a fan of unions. I don't know if Charlie is or not. No, I just, yeah, and I find this completely interesting, uh, interesting because the city said that they were confident he would have been returned to work by an independent arbiter. Mm-hmm. It's just crazy. Yeah. Absolutely crazy that you can't fire someone 
for any reason, but even for having Nazi symbols. How do you make sure that you have the I best people working glorious, in these glorious bastards every time? I've only ever I've only seen that once. It was good, and I, just, I liked it. I like the way uh, he says Nazi Nazis. Mm-hmm. All right, next one, Charles, number eight. We're we're getting close, okay. but we got a couple doozies coming up now from the POTUS himself. Oh, he's so great. Definitely has a blue check mark. He tweets out, my approach has brought down COVID deaths by 90%. It's opened schools and businesses that were shuttered, and it's created the greatest jobs recovery in American history. 8.7 million new jobs in just 16 months, an all-time record. Wow. Things are looking up. Biden's approach brought down COVID deaths by 90%. Even though cases are surging currently, but they're going to remove the testing requirement to come back in the United States. I'm wondering what part of his approach brought down COVID deaths by 90% from the highs when Biden was president. Still, by the way, mm-hmm. he's literally now talking about things that changed, you know, while he was president. That would make it seem like you could just make things super terrible in your first year and know where to go but up. And then you just talk about how awesome everything is. But what part of Biden's approach do you think brought down the COVID deaths by 90%? All of it. Which part of it? I mean, the approach. His approach. Yeah. Everything he wanted Yeah. to get to get past. I did bring a chart, by the way. The He probably came in mm-hmm. with, the, with the full uh, fist mm-hmm. with the wings out. Yeah. And on the, he landed, he put down the landing gear. He said, listen here, Jack, we are going to end COVID. You know, we tried to do the man, the vaccine mandate. Um, he actually also talked the whole time about how he didn't have the power to do anything through most of this. And then through basically an act of uh, nature, we've all got immunity. Now, there's also people got vaccinated. That's also helped with some people's immunity mm-hmm. as well. Uh, the deaths have came down by 90%. Now, he's taking credit for it because it's the things that he did. And I'm still trying to figure out. Someone tell me in the chat what it was that he did. He, his approach, Nate. His his approach. Maybe he means his approach to get none of the things that he wanted done. They mm. did get the mandate on the healthcare professionals, which um, clearly were, was uh, one of the biggest sources of the deaths. Yeah, that there were Obviously. out there. Mm-hmm. Uh, this uh, actually this, all the old people died from it already. This peak right here <laughs> it was in January. Um, let me see. Yeah, so that's a. Uh, you know, that was him. We got almost back up to those peaks uh, it, just a few months ago. Almost back up to that. Now we're talking he's, about restrictions again. Now he's brought it down by 90%. And this right here, this chunk, that was whatever it was that Biden did. Right there. Hmm. Nothing else. There was no science. There was no anything else involved. It was something that the Biden administration did. His approach. I'm amazed. Hmm. I'm just purely amazed by that. Speaking of Biden, can I play a funny video of him real quick? Let's I showed it, it to you earlier. Um, this is this, number eight will be Biden. Man, this is awkward. Okay. 14-second video. Let's see what he had to say. And by the way, my sympathies to your the family of your, F, uh, uh, your, your CFO who uh, un, dropped dead very unexpectedly. My best to their family. It's tough stuff. Oh, he had to. That's how he stopped himself. Yeah. Yeah, I went up to <laughs> went up to my friend. You know, um, I'm real sorry. You know, I heard that your wife dropped dead suddenly. I'm very, very sorry about that. You know, my sympathies. <laughs> it's a tough thing. You know. Oh, and they're like the family's all warm and fuzzy. They're like, oh, President Biden says that he extends his sympathy after Fred uh, dropped dead. Drop dead, Fred, as they call him. <laughs> Oh, that's so nice of them. Okay, now let's get to something real dumb, real quick. Richard Dick Wolf. Real quick. Professor Wolf. The Fed mostly serves capital, employers, the 1%, not labor, employees, or the 99%. To end inflation, government could forbid employers from raising prices. Then employers will respond to more demand by producing and selling more, creates jobs, 
not inflation. Even Nixon in 1971 got that, but not even today's Democrats. Mm. He invokes Nixon in 1971. Oh, okay. So I thought the best response to this uh, would actually be uh, would actually be to hear from Milton Friedman on this whole thing. So what did Nixon do? He he froze uh, he he froze prices and wages, all these price controls uh, in 1971. And what happened? That everything got amazing after that. You know that the 70s was this period of g- growth and just the flourishment of the American spirit, one of the greatest times that we've ever uh, endured there as was, Americans. It was probably the great when when Trump said "Make America Great Again." He meant he meant the seventies, the mid to the early to mid nineteen seventies mm. is what he was talking about. Yeah. Price controls, of course. And before we hear from from uh, Professor Friedman, uh, here's some of the images you see here: gas rationing set for Monday. That happened in 1973. It's really weird that you ended up having to have gas rationing after that. And here's a picture of a car with a sign on it says, open for service, sorry, no gas. Uh, and then here's a, here's a little chart right here when he did this in 1971. You got inflation at 3.3% in 1971. 1972, 3.4%. 1973, 8.7%. In 1974, 12.3%. 1975, 6.9%. You know, what's really weird was they ended up having the wage and price controls up through 1974. It's really, really weird. And then we end up, uh, they also took us off the gold standard during that time, printed a bunch of money. And we end up running up to crazy inflation. What happened in 1975? We didn't have Richard Nixon anymore. Yeah, that's true. Because of Watergate in 1974. That's weird. It's weird how that happens. Mm. Okay, let's let's actually just hear from Friedman on this real quick. Come on, Friedman. What are the imponderables and uncertainties in that picture? Well, the first and most important imponderable, I believe, is the energy problem. The energy problem is not a technical problem, it's not a physical problem, it's not a problem produced by private business. It's a problem which was produced primarily, you will be surprised to find, by Richard M. Nixon on August 15, 1971, when he imposed wage and price controls. And the only element of those wage and price controls that still exists of any significance is a control on the price of oil. If you had never had that wage and price control and never had the price of oil controlled, you would not be having any energy problem at all. You know, economists don't know much, but there's one thing we know very, very well, and that's how to produce shortages. <laughs> Tell us what you want a shortage in. If you want a shortage in, in, in lettuce, we'll set a maximum legal price for lettuce below the price that prevails in the market, and I guarantee you, you'll have a shortage of lettuce. You want a shortage of housing? In New York City, we'll set a maximum price, rent control, a maximum price on rent, you'll have a shortage of housing. You want a shortage of funds available to borrow for uh, mortgages? Just have a usury law that sets a maximum limit on the interest rate that may be charged. And if that usury law sets a limit below what would otherwise prevail in the market, you'll have a shortage of funds available for mortgages. In the same way, if you want to have the appearance of a shortage in oil, Just set a maximum price on oil. Make it unprofitable for people to produce it. Make it profitable for people to use it. And what we have been doing in oil, as a result of that oil price control imposed on August 15, 1971, we have gone the standard natural route of government controls. We've gone from that price control to an allocation of oil. We have a program whereby we implicitly tax heavily domestic producers of oil and subsidize imports from abroad. You know, it's insane. Here we supposedly have a problem about our excess of imports from the OPEC countries. And yet we are following a policy which amounts to a subsidy of $3 a barrel on every barrel of oil imported from OPEC. How silly can you be? Uh, Now, Mr. Carter has come out now with an energy program which would make all of this much worse. It's not a program for energy. 
It's another case of misleading labeling. It's a tax program. It's a major, major tax program, which would make the energy problem worse, not better. It would lead, it would reduce the incentive to produce energy. It would lead to a wasteful use of energy. It, if that energy program were adopted, which fortunately it looks as if it will not be, then I might very well change the forecast I've been giving you. Then I might expect a recession to develop in 1978, and I might expect under those circumstances double-digit inflation by 1979. Mm. Seems that we're arguing about the same things in these yeah, days. Yeah, still talking about the same stuff. And this is what I love so much about history is that, you know, if you do the same things over and over again, uh, you're going to get the same results. He said he might expect double-digit inflation by 1979. 1978, we're at 9%. 1979, we're at 13.3%. Imagine that. Huh. How about mm. that? That's pretty crazy. I, I, I'm I, responsible for posting his content on TikTok. That's weird. Mm -hmm. I hope I don't screw it up. I we'll think see. you're doing good so far. I hope they don't block us like they did our own TikTok. Hey, everyone, by the way, go to our TikTok. Good morning, Liberty. And uh, hit hit like on it. Watch the video. Hit like. Add it to your favorites. Leave a comment. Some of you went and did that after the last time that we mentioned this, and I would like everyone to do that yet again, because we did in fact go from about three hundred thousand plays per week on TikTok down to about three thousand. Jesus. Over the span of a week, and we're holding steady down there in that level. So, uh, yeah, go over there because they decided that they don't want us to put out content anymore. Hey, there's a crank in the hose, man. All right, Charlie, top it off with dumb belief number 10. Don't you hate that, by the way, when you oh, yeah. turn the water on, you got to find the crank in the hose? Yeah, you got to get one of those kinkless hoses, <sighs> man. All right, number 10 from Nina Turner. Making the list again. Here we go. She uh, tweets out, what good is an electric car if the power plant generating the electricity runs on fossil fuels? And then she said, to clarify, we need a Green New Deal ASAP. And if you take her first statement there, um, that's a great question. Mm -hmm. It's almost like people have been asking that question for a while. What good are the EVs if the power that charges them comes from coal? Yeah. It's, yeah. Al it's almost like you're not actually solving the problem you're talking about solving. Mm -mm. In fact, you're just pushing up this EV industry, the battery, battery industry, all of them. Uh, while, while doing that, I think people have been talking about this for like 10 years or so or more, however long we've had electric vehicles. Mm -hmm. And I even had some conversations with some people on this, and, I, and they, didn't seem to, they didn't seem to get it. They were like, yeah, but the electric cars, you know, they're, they're not going to be using the fossil fuels. I'm like, they're like, we're already making energy with fossil fuels, and so the electric cars, they'll reduce the amount of carbon emissions that there are out there on the road. I was like, well... But what happens when you need to increase the power? What about when you increase the energy to charge those vehicles <laughs> yeah. from the dirty power? But now, it's, see, it's not them doing it, though. They're not actually physically going to the pump and filling their car up with gas. They're just... They don't see there's no carbon ticker for them when they plug their car in. It's about what makes so, you feel just like, like vaccines are free. <laughs> yeah. Like because their interaction with it, there was no transaction involved for them. Mm hmm. And so they they see it a certain way. And I just find this interesting that people, you know, I usually give people benefit of the doubt. I'm like, man, people are way smarter than we give them credit for. And then things like this, you're like, I don't think they are. No. I don't think like you maybe ask the, another question. Like, where does the electricity come from? It, it, like, there's not only one step mm -hmm. in the process. Yeah. That you just, you did. We don't just have electricity. <laughs> it has to be produced by something. Yes. Now, we're not arguing uh, that we have to close down all the coal plants. And we got to stop all the natural gases or any of that stuff. That's not what we're saying. What we are saying is you don't get to make yourself feel good and look good and have this moral superiority over people just because we switched over to electric vehicles, which by estimations do still have a lower carbon footprint overall through the life of the vehicle uh, if they only use one uh, battery throughout that time. 
uh, and a lot of other a lot of other things. But um, they do have about a ten percent lower carbon footprint, ten percent lower. And if we could go to something like let's say nuclear energy or find alternative energy resources and then charge the cars that way, then yeah, it could be, a, it's definitely a step in the right direction. But she gives her clarification here that this is, we need the green new deal. Mm -hmm. Got to have that. Not like maybe we should invest in nuclear power or maybe we should whatever. No, it's, it's the green new deal. That's the only deal that's going to save us is we need to rob, Twelve trillion dollars from everyone, and oh, it'll be way more than that. Well, that's just the, you know, just at the start. That's the start. Okay, let's you run know, back. It doesn't matter how many people starve. That's what we're gonna do. So, uh, let's run back through all the dumb bleeps. Number one, that was the Paul v. Fauci and all the responses about the vaccine being free. Nobody had to pay for them; they were free. They didn't mandate anyone bought the vaccine because they were free. Free, free, free vaccines. They were free. Uh, number two, monkeypox getting the name change for uh, super non-racist reasons. Number three, same thing here. George Washington University can't use colonials anymore. Uh, number four, Mayday Mindy's heart goes out to all the unborn children that are going to be saved by the Supreme Court because then they're just going to be massacred. Later on, I've already posted all these in Dumb Bleep of the Week channel, Charlie. No, oh, okay. Uh, number five, this is not ancient history. It's current reality. See this letter dated August 5th, 1959, that we still have racism right now, current reality. Uh, number five, then we got Musk is just a white supremacist. Terrible one, by the way. Terrible white supremacist voting for uh, a woman that was born in Mexico uh, to... Um, to be in Congress. But that's one of the telltale signs of a white supremacist, mm -hmm. as you know, of course. And there's her picture. Uh, number seven, the Nazi cop who got $1.5 million to resign because he couldn't be fired because we don't allow people in the government to fire people in the government because that would be terrible. Uh, number eight, Biden brought down the COVID deaths by 90% through sheer tyranny of will. <laughs> decrease those because of his approach mm -hmm. what it was that he did never, that's that's why we're not all dying right now mm. mm -hmm. never mind the fact that that's coming down from a point when he was also the president still <laughs> number nine uh dick wolf out there saying that we need to listen to richard nixon and freeze prices okay because it worked so well in the yeah. 70s yeah, now he just says it forbid employers from raising prices. He's not going to mention freezing wages also, but just raising prices, and that's going to solve all the problems. Like any good economist, he looks back through history, and he sees what works and what didn't work, and then he makes his determinations and tweets it out to his followers. And so, of course, that's what we have to do is what Nixon did, uh, for sure. And then the last one was Nina Turner, not Tina Turner, Nina Turner, uh, said, what good is an EV if the power plant generating electricity runs on fossil fuels? Uh, yeah. Thank you. Welcome to making the same arguments that people on the right have been making for like a decade now. And we were just conspiracy theorists. Mm -hmm. Just crazy people who don't care about the environment. All right, y'all. Get your votes in. Get those votes in in the Dumb Bleep channel. D-B-O-T-W channel that is in the uh, Discord right here. Which you join by going to joingml.com. That's right. And then you join for as little as $6 a month. You get to hang out with us, say a bunch of stuff during the podcast that we may or may not repeat. See, while you're listening to this, everyone else who's in the live group is voting, right? Mm -hmm. now. They're not even listening to the spiel that we're given because they're busy voting, taking into careful consideration the dumbest thing of the week and <laughs> making their vote and their voice heard. So get your voice heard. Join GML.com. Sign up at MasterMyTrades.com to figure out what's going on in the market. Uh, with yours truly, Mr. Nathaniel Paul Thurston, who's currently in a trade I just reminded him of. So he's going to go Ooh. check that really quick. Uh -oh. And it, it doesn't sound good. Now so I just, I need to look and see. Figure, oh, figure okay. out it's up. what's going on. <laughs> go to mastermytrades.com and uh, make sure you share the show with a friend, a family member, a foe, and the children. Who's got the win this week? Everybody get your votes in. It looks like old feeling bad for the kids. 
Mm. You know, that's the one that's going to win right now. It looks like she's running away with it. So the moral of the story is make sure you abort your kids Mm -hmm. so they don't even have a chance of getting shot in a school. And honestly, if you have kids right now, uh, you're going to have to consider going home and killing them, you know, (laughs) because they're clearly the fear they will have to go through when they inevitably die Mm. in a shooting at their school because it is inevitable. And honestly, uh, there's so much suffering and hurt in the world. We should, I don't know if the human race should exist anymore. Uh, I wasn't going to say it, but I think you're completely I, 100% right. It's, yeah. I, I just don't want anybody to, to have any pain. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm clearly joking, by the way. But anyway, if you guys do all of those things that I mentioned, and I mean all of them, then we'll be back again on Monday. I hope you have a good weekend and a good morning, Liberty.